Mr. Krupp hates anything fun, like comic books, recess, Christmas, <laughs> even kittens. Oh my goodness, did that really happen? Uh, no, not technically, but it might as well have. I'm sorry, I'm still mad about the comic. Yeah, me too. And I'm free. In my office. Now! and see what happens. Door lock activated. Wow, that's an expensive door. It was a choice between the magnetic automatic door closer and the music and arts programs. <laughs> Pretty sure I made the right choice. This morning's school sign is supposed to read, Sewage plant field trips are today. So can either of you explain why it now reads, Come see my hairy armpits. <laughs> I know you two are responsible. How? How do you know? Do you have any proof? I mean, this is a country of laws. The proof is here. Inside my gut. He must have a lot of proof in there. <laughs> Quite fine. Quite fine. <laughs> mm. Ever since you've attended this elementary school, you've been responsible for one prank after another. Hello, and welcome to Book vs. Movie. This is a podcast where we read books that have been adapted into movies, and then we try to decide which we like better, the book or the movie. I am Margo P. of ColoniaBook.com, and this is my good friend and co-host, Margo D. of Brooklyn Fit Chick. Hi, everyone. So it's technically, it's October. Yes. But we have a really super special episode today, and we are wrapping up Banned Book Month, which we covered. If you're brand new, we spent all of September doing banned books. I think this is our so this is like our fourth episode fourth. of banned book of our fourth banned book episode in a row. Um, because when the pandemic started, we decided to do a brand new episode every single week, and so that means there are loads of them for you to enjoy. Um, it also means that we can't always do a super long book every single week, and so. We're really expanding what we mean by book to mean any kind of literary adaptation, whether it's from a play or a magazine article, um, a song or a poem. If it is an adaptation, we will consider it. If you have suggestions, we've got spooky books coming up next month. Mm -hmm. We've got the holidays coming. Um, so we are always looking for ideas and you probably have some that you would like to share. You can do that in a couple of different places on the internet. We do have a basic Facebook page. Be sure to like it. You can leave suggestions there. We're much more interactive in the Facebook group. And it's a group on Facebook where people just talk about books and movies. It's pretty great. So you have to ask to join that. And that's Book vs. Movie Podcast Group in Facebook. We're on Twitter and Instagram, Book versus Movie. Spell that all out. And if you have those, please follow us there. And we have an old-timey email, Book versus Movie Podcast. Spell that all out at gmail.com. If you would like some stickers or magazines, magnets. We would be happy to send those to you in the mail. We also just ask that whatever the literary source is, whatever it may be, it needs to be something that's pretty easy for us to get our hands on. If it's an article or a song or a book or whatever, it needs to be easy. And also the movie needs to be on one of the major streaming services. We can't be buying old DVDs or whatever. It's just, it's got to be easy for other people in order to be able to enjoy the show. So that's where, that's the deal. That's right. As we're wrapping up this banned book month, Margo and I have been just baffled with every <laughs> single book that we've done as to why it has been banned. We're going to get into that with this one in just a minute. But if you really enjoy the show, maybe you want to hear what we did last year. You want to keep us in books and movies. You can also support us on Patreon. 
Yes, we have uh, two years worth of shows, by the way, in our regular feeds all over the place, wherever you get your podcast. So this goes from about 2020. And then just previous to the pandemic, all of our stuff is up there. I'm just about to post a bunch of old Halloween episodes that we've done or we've done with guest hosts that um, joined us. This is all back in the olden days, but it'll be fun to get into the mood for October. And so we have a couple of very affordable options, and it just helps us pay for the cost of the movies and the, and the hosting and the upkeep and things like that. So that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N. If you're interested, please join us there. We'd really appreciate it. We just do. Thank you. We really do. It's, it really means a lot that we've been able to keep this going for as long as we have. I mean, not just that we've done it for eight years, but that we've kept this every single week thing going for as long as we have mm-hmm. um, has been really. COVID be damned. Could, couldn't do it without you guys. Right. We really, really appreciate it. So today we're going to be talking about both one of the most successful um, book series in the United States and also one of the most banned books in the United States. We were shocked to learn um, that this, what could this controversial poisoning our children's minds uh, tome possibly be? It's uh, Captain Underpants, Margo. Yeah, we <laughs> so we covered Slaughterhouse Five a couple of weeks ago, and so Kurt Vonnegut was somebody we were talking about, of course. And we follow the Kurt Vonnegut Museum on Instagram, and the Kurt Vonnegut Museum in September we talked about banned books, and one of their you know Instagram mess. Uh, stories that they put out said from Captain Underpants to Slaughterhouse Five, we talk about banned books. And I said to you, Captain Underpants is banned. I've Margo has kids. We're both named Margo, by the way, if you're just listening to, for the first time. But uh, Margo is in San Diego and she has kids. I don't have kids. So we didn't grow up with this, but you had a son who is a big, big fan of it. Yes, I had a my son. I have a son. He's yep. he's in the other room. But when he was younger, you know, about the age that kids start reading these series, you know, he was not that into books. My daughter's always been like a real um, bookworm, but he, he not so much. And um, we were really, I was really looking for ways to get him more interested in reading. And and fortunately for kids his age, all of a sudden there was all these wonderful books that were available. Uh, to bring in what in the industry are called reluctant readers and is like code for boys because um, there was just there was this issue that boys were not reading as or perceived to be reading as much as girls. I've known plenty of boy bookworms. So, <laughs> right, but, my brothers. Um, yeah. But as a parent, it's a real challenge when you're trying to find because you know, especially if you are a reader, you know it's just like finding the right thing that they're gonna they're, they're gonna connect with. So he was a huge fan of of these books, and I yes, I had I remember we read them together, and he then he read them on his own because he wanted to know what happened because the whole series he wanted to know what happened after that. I did not know at the time. I think already by then it was already being banned in places. I had no idea until we just until this week mm-hmm. um, the extent to which these books and and this one in particular for some because I guess the first one um, have been banned. Mm-hmm. Unbelievable. And this guy, let's talk about the author who's trying to like indoctrinate our children. Yes, this mad <laughs> this madman. His name is Dave Pilkey. He's from the Cleveland area. When he was growing up and going to elementary school in the 70s, he, he reminds me of my brother, Joe. He had ADHD and dyslexia, and so did and my brother did. You know, he was, it was, they called it hyperactivity disorder at the time. And he would get in touch, you know, he had a hard time focusing. He had a hard time reading because the words would get jumbled and things like that. And so the teachers who didn't diagnose him into him right away, they just thought he was a problem kid. And they put him in the hallway. And so he would create these comic books in the hallway. And when he was in the second grade, he came up with Captain Underpants. Why Captain Underpants? Because most of the heroes he saw were in their underpants when they were running around solving crimes and doing their thing. He's brilliant. Second grade. He goes to college. He sells his first story there. He enters a competition. And then Captain Underpants comes out in 1997. He's also, he has the Dumb Bunnies series and Dog Man. I love this. One of his pseudonyms is Sue Denim. I just think that's hilarious. (laughs) <laughs> and one of the things he he tries to talk about, and he has been banned and he does talk about it is 
it was important for him to reach to kids in a graphic novel kind of way because for him that helped him learn to read. When you ha- look at a character and they say, and he's in a specific example I heard from him said, my mother was livid. It goes, well, what does the word livid mean? When you look at a book and then you see her face and she looks angry, it goes, oh, that's what livid means. And it just helped him, you know, it was, so anyway, He's been writing these books since 97. He's a big advocate for children and reading and for young adults. He could have sold this right away for a pretty penny. And he was very particular. He wanted to get the series out first and he wanted it done correctly. And he managed to do that. He's had some controversy. There was a book that came out and there was a, um, let me just look this up here. He had one that they pulled last year. Yeah, it was during the pandemic. And it it was, uh, he's married to a Japanese woman, by the way. And they go to Japan quite frequently. A Japanese American, excuse me. But uh, yeah, the the adventures of Ook and Gluck. And it was about kids and it was about, Kung Fu fighting. It might have been something like from his literally like that's a song from our childhood that people used to sing. But it had a lot of Asian stereotypes that he didn't realize that were. And so he took it down himself, by the way. He and he put out an apology and, you know, but go ahead. Well, I was going to say, yeah, he said um, and I thought this was really again, like he's so smart. Um, He says in his statement, he said that. even unintentional and passive stereotypes are harmful to everyone. Right. And, you know, he could have been, he could have pushed back. He's a very powerful, you know, he's he's a very, very well-known, extremely wealthy, has a lot of pull author now. He could have been like, no, like a certain other very famous uh, series of, author of a series of children's books we know. Yeah. Um, he could have dug his heels in and been like, no, this is my creative work, blah, blah, blah. But no, he didn't. And yeah, I really commend him for that. Yeah. He, I mean, he's a powerful white man in a publishing industry where he makes people a lot of money and he has a lot of money. He lives a dream life. He also works very hard. He has a lot of work under his belt. I didn't realize like there's a whole Captain Underpants series on Netflix that continues the story. I was just like, oh, my God, it's so much fun. But his work is as soon as it came out and kids found it right away, as Margot says, and it's very visual as well as, you know, the, it has like the flip books, I guess, like with the flip rama flip rama which <laughs> I had the, I didn't have that because I had the Kindle version. So unfortunately, but you could flip back and forth. I was reading it that way too. Yeah. Yeah. You could. I yeah. mean, I would have liked to have, been but it's to. not as fun as with the page. Yes. I have to admit, cause I've read both in both versions and yeah, it's more fun when you actually have a physical page to flip back and forth. Yeah. Um, but you can almost get the effect. But it, almost. It, but it was fun. And it's about these, you know, the first story is just about these two kids that are best friends in the fourth grade, Harold and George. And they just are into pranks and they're going to school together and they're best, 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 best friends. And they just get up, get up to a lot of mischief and they get called to the principal's office quite a bit. And they, you know, they and it's very over the top, like the teachers are mean and the principal is mean and school is a drudgery. Going there every day is just, a, you know, a drag. And so they try to they're just trying to make it fun for everybody. And they put do things like they put uh sneezing powder in the girls pom-poms for cheerleading stuff like that they like to rearrange the letters on the school sign it's and the school is for um curly it's is jerome uh something high school uh jerome horowitz i want to say yeah horowitz yeah and that's curly from mo and you know from the three stooges three stooges (laughs) he's the one that says i try to think and nothing happens that's him it's so great it this so these kids it's a lot of like there's fart jokes and there's there's mr poopy pants who's like the mean substitute teacher that comes in yeah it's kids being naughty but not mean they're just they're rambunctious i guess is my it's true they're never they're never mean and they're never it depends what you mean by mean, I guess, yeah. like, you know, making the cheerleaders sneeze or uh, didn't they put like itching powder or something in the, in the football? Yeah. First of all, it's something no actual real child would ever get away with, even if they thought they were going to try something like that. Nobody gets away with stuff like that. 
No, and it's it's all in just good fun. I mean, like they, they, these kids just want to have, they just want to be best friends forever. They want to always like be there by their each other's side, and they live next door to each other. It's just very very cute, and they have it's, it's just a beautiful fun little book. I and I, I think it and and apart from the pranks, yes. <laughs> um, what I think is good, and the pranks are part of this, is that you know the book encourages kids to be imaginative, yes, and to be creative, and you know one one of the kids as you met, I think you mentioned one of the kids is the illustrator and one of the kids is the writer of the Captain Underpants series. And so it's also about them working together. Yep. You know, one of them, they're better, they're, they're, what is that, greater than the sum of their parts. Mm -hmm. And they cooperate. And um, there's a lot of really cool messaging here for children. So why, oh, why (laughs) is this one of the most banned books in American history? I thought back to... I remember, we're old enough to remember The Simpsons when they first started, and there were people that wanted to oh, ban because seriously. Bart Parents. Simpson mm-hmm. was- Parent organizations. They really had a problem with Bart Simpson, and that was like their first season was like a lot of defending Bart Simpson and The Simpsons, which is, <laughs> which is so like, he's now like Dennis the Menace. Exactly. Like he's like a classic, like vintagey, cute kind of- kind of character that everybody was so worried about yeah that's it's exactly it's the same thing and yeah we my parents would have loved if we had these kind of books around the because you know kids think fart jokes are funny and a name like yes. you know mr poopy Pants and if it gets some reading yes it gets why some not reading. yes it, it sells really well there's several stories to be had here i love it that what they do is so the principal you know he gets on their case because they're always breaking the rules let's be clear i mean these are the consequences but at one point he's like i'm gonna separate you two you're gonna be in two different classrooms and they're just like no we're best friends this is our whole thing and so they buy a ring that's a hypnotizing ring and they hypnotize him with the ring and when he and they tell him, like, play like a chicken. And he plays like a chicken. And then they're like, you're Captain Underpants. And he's like, okay. And he immediately turns himself into Captain Underpants. And he has this totally different personality. And he kind of just does their bidding, which is like whatever it is they need them to do. And it's so funny. It's so great. It's so silly. It's really, really, really wonderful. I mean, it. I don't understand why anybody would have a problem with this. So I want to, you know, again, we're wrapping up Man Book Month, and I and I want to. I told I had two citations for why it was banned that I was able to find. Okay. Generally, the series is challenged um, for encouraging disruptive behavior, but as we said, really though, show me one instance. Right. Show me one instance where like. These kids went too far. They read this book and then they tried to hypnotize the principal. Or <laughs> and then he walked around in his underwear solving crimes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh-huh. Yeah. Sure, Jan. <laughs> um, but then it was specifically banned in Michigan um, because one of the protagonists, I can't remember if it's George or Harold, one of the protagonists grows up um, – to be an artist, oh, it's the one who's the artist, uh, grows up to be an artist living with his domestic partner, Billy. So he he's, uh, he grows up to be gay or he is gay. And uh, we, we learn that as an adult that he's he has he has a domestic partner who is a man. Right. And so uh, Michigan was like, not on our watch <laughs> and stepped in. Now, I want to say if you want if you're wondering about some of your favorite books that may have been banned and uh, this is my little PSA moment if you're wondering about some of your uh, favorite books that have been banned and you want to know why there's a wonderful organization out there called everylibrary.org i have uh, worked with them in the past they actually go around the country saving libraries they are like a little superhero organization um, in and of themselves they they swoop in when libraries um anywhere in the country are in danger of being closed there are you know sadly these are often libraries that are in you know poorer communities lower income communities communities of color those tend to be the ones that uh, end up on the chopping block yeah. you know they are very well connected in the library world and they kind of come in and, and they, they've had a lot of success in trying to save libraries and they have an online bookstore that sells banned books <laughs> that you can purchase and help support their cause and it is the website is banned bookstore all one word 
B A N N E D bookstore dot C O. So that is a, a an online bookstore that goes to support uh, everylibrary.org, which is a nonprofit, and um, you can help keep books on shelves for kids all over this country by shopping there. And uh, yeah, highly, highly encourage you to check out and check them out on Instagram, Every Library. And they did a huge series during Banned Book Month of books that you wouldn't think would be banned. And they tell you where they were banned and why and what you can do about it, which is awesome. You know, you're angry and you want to do something. Right. And there they are (laughs) with a great thing that you can do to help fight. Why are we fighting banned books in 2022? But here we are. I don't know. And it's something like we heard about when we were kids. And do you remember when we were kids, they scared us about Halloween candy and that people were trying to poison us and and that's coming back again. There's a lot of a lot of stories that are upsetting to me. Like, I mean, good things like the Brooklyn Library opened up online with the Libby app, they opened up a, a, a connection oh, it's for so kids. Wonderful. To all with- over the country, yes, your child can join the book, the Brooklyn Public Library, and have because that is a massive library, yes, and have access to their resources, which is incredible. Yeah, I mean, and that's a that's a place for it. There's some places where there's so many people that are so upset that it's just become this place. People would go to these school meetings and now they're going to library meetings. And I've seen it on film, like on TikTok, of women having a book group at a library and a guy coming around and just filming them with a GoPro. Just like, what do you think What's we're up to wrong here? with people? What you, dude? Like, and also, uh. for me, it's like the drag time, like the drag drag queens reading to kids and oh, dads yeah. being busted. And yeah, there's no evidence of any drag queen that harms kids they don't have an interest in that no show me that show me where the drag queen story time ended in tears (laughs) you know (laughs) for anybody you know it's getting kids excited about reading yes that's the whole ah, thing and entertaining and showing them that that's you know it's fun to read yes (laughs) you just reminded me every christmas here in san diego with the that our fanciest fanciest hotel downtown at the Westgate Hotel they do this breakfast I think it's breakfast with Santa they do this very fancy Christmas brunch for families and part of the whole um package I think we went once or twice when I was a kid and I, I think I took a niece once um I think I took my niece one time and part of it is they have a story time reading the Nutcracker and the Nutcracker is being read by the the actual ballerina who is playing the Sugar Plum Fairy that season in at our low, you know, in the ballet production of of the Nutcracker down the street, and she comes in her full, you know, Sugar Plum Fairy costume and tutu and pointed. It is no different than that. It really is no different. And I don't than see that. parents like fairies are reading to our kid. I mean, it's not. No, come on. It's so silly. It's so ridiculous. And these are just kind of the realities we're dealing with right now. And that's why we, we picked this book because we're trying to just show how ridiculous it's get, it can get. Like, and it's, yeah. we're saying, like, you know, we, of course we want to protect kids. Margo's a mother. Of course she's like, which is concerned about what they, what's out there and what they consume. But like, this is innocent. This is fun. And this gets them, and kids who read and read consistently do better on tests they do better with communication skills they do better in math there's lots of really good solid reasons to encourage kids to read so and, finding and something what I, for them is important yeah and not easy right by the way finding something that's good and encourages them to do that is very difficult there's not that many you know resources and there's more now than there ever were but the other thing I think, as I mentioned before, um, and I think it bears repeating, the other thing that I think is really special about this series in particular is not only does it encourage our kids to read more because it's fun and, you know, it's funny and fun and imaginative. It also encourages them to write. Yes. And draw. Come on. And make up their own stories. And, yes. figure, and figure out what a plot is and how you move mm-hmm. a plot along. And what do we do now? Because you wrote us into this corner. So what do we do now? That's all good stuff to learn. It's it's just, I I, I don't know. <laughs> that's why we did. Yeah. So th- and th- that's why. It's baffling. It's baffling. It's just baffling. These books are available everywhere. They're on, they're on Audible. You can find clip on YouTube. You can find them on Spotify. You could find them on the Libby app. 
these are available. And if you have a tough reader, somebody who's just a reluctant reader, excuse me, I encourage you, like maybe give Captain Underpants a chance if it's like a young kid that it might be a good entryway. It, agreed. I mean, I cannot recommend it enough. I can't. I'm sorry. I just looked at the 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 actual like listing of the why it's been banned, things it's been banned mm-hmm. for. These are the things that they, they say are in this book. Insensitivity to whom? Nobody. Am I missing something? I mean, if if I genuinely, I mean, I'm genuinely asking. If if you are listening and maybe you're in our Facebook group and there's some insensitivity in this book and we are missing it, please tell us. But I didn't notice any. Um, insensitivity, offensive language, uh, poopy, poopy, fart. Okay, okay. Um, encouraging disruptive behavior, LGBTQ plus issues. Why are we banning that? I don't know. Violence. I don't recall really any violence. Um, being unsuited to the age group. How? Citation needed, please. Um, sexually explicit content. What? What? Sexually explicit content. Anti-family content. Anti-whose family, I want to know. As well as encouraging children to disobey authority. So that is the list of things for which this has been banned um, over the years. Again, it is one of the most, It no, I think it might be the most banned. It, um, you know, it's it's Huck Finn is up there. with. Uh, oh, yes, Huck Finn. No, it's one of the most banned. And it's for um, the same reasons. I mean, it's for the language, of course, and that doesn't But also age well. like that he's, you know, he doesn't have a family and he's he's a, he's a prankster and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. No. Interesting. Right? Well, should we talk about this movie? Yes. Okay. Captain Underpants movie 2017. We're going to play the trailer right now. We'll take a quick break, play the trailer. And then we'll get right into Captain Underpants. Hi, I'm Kevin Hart. And I'm Ed Helms. Check out this sneak peek of our new movie, DreamWorks Captain Underpants. It's the story of a superhero. I take that back because he's barely a superhero. He's absolutely a superhero, no, Captain no, Underpants. Ed, Ed, he doesn't have x-ray vision. He can't even climb a tree. Wearing a cape does not make him a superhero. Yes, it does. You know, I'm not going to argue with you. Why don't you guys decide for yourselves by watching the sneak peek of DreamWorks Captain Underpants. The superhero. It's not a superhero. Super, it's a total superhero. Tomato, tomato. What is happening right now? I don't know. Let's try and leave and see what happens. <gasps> Wow, that's an expensive door. Mm-hmm. From the studio that brought you Shrek, Kung Fu Panda, and Madagascar. Hi, I'm George Beard, and this is my best friend Harold Hutchins. We just make comics and try to make each other laugh. And this old guy is Mr. Crook. George Harold! He's the worst principal in the world. Ever since you attended this school, you've been responsible for one prank after another. <laughs> Some of those must have been really hard to pull off. Like that tiger? Oh, that tiger was crazy. Ah! I told you I would get you one day. I'm going to have you two placed in separate classes. We're going to annihilate the friendship. Ah! Ah! Don't you do something. Put the pin down, Mr. Krupp, or we'll hypnotize you. <laughs> Stop You will obey our every command. <gasps> you are now the amazing Captain Underpants. I honestly didn't think that would happen. This summer. Come sidekick. We gotta stop him. Why? Why, thank you, vehicle person. Yep, we should probably go get him. Their greatest creation. Captain Underpants, you can't actually fly. I take to the sky like an ostrich. Wow, he is super dumb. He's now their biggest problem. Stand down, you monster. Roll along. I think I'm starting to tire him out. Based on the worldwide phenomenon. Hiya, class. I'm your cool new teacher. Not some scary guy with a secret evil agenda. Guys, I totally got this. Yeah, totally, he's got it. Kevin Hart, Ed Helms, Thomas Middleditch, Nick Kroll. When it's 
it's cut all together like that, you really get a sense of the scope. DreamWorks Captain Underpants. Poor soul, you're trapped in some sort of invisible box-like prison. Is it okay that I'm kind of loving this? Yes and no. I will set you free. Oh, Ooh, but mostly yes. This is a production of DreamWorks. It has Kevin Hart, Ed Helms, uh, Thomas Middleditch, and Nick Kroll, among many people who are in this movie. And I said this- Kirsten Schaal. Kirsten Schaal. She's so great. Jordan Peele is in this movie. There's so oh, many- Oh, he's great in this. Yeah. It's such a great- It's an awesome- This Okay. Spoiler alert. This right. movie is amazing and we love it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> We're adults and we totally love this movie. It was hilarious. It's so I funny. was smiling the whole time. I was smiling and laughing for the entire start to finish when they show the DreamWorks logo and the boys are like, oh, no, no. <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah, they play the two, the boys that are the two best friends and they're going to school together and they like comic books and they created this hero called Captain Underpants. They have their th- company as Treehouse Comics, Inc. I just love all of this stuff. Like, obviously, there's been several stories since the first Cap. We just read the first Captain Underpants, by the way, and I only read it once. So I, I'm just going by my and I've only seen the movie once. So I've read it a couple of times. I think it's I think I've only read the first one. Um, but yeah, both my kids told me that this is like on based off of like three of them. OK, there's a new teacher that th- there's um, Nick Kroll plays Mr. Poopy Pants, who's this teacher that wants to come to the school. <laughs> So they get rid of the science teacher who wants to be with his family. It's very funny. I'm sorry. It's just very funny. These They're two kids. They're two best friends. And Kevin Hart is hilarious. He's so, I just love his voice. He's so sweet and he's so funny. And Thomas Hiddleditch as Harold is really sweet. And they, they do get in trouble at school. And it's Ed Helms is the principal. And he's, he's Captain Underpants. I mean. And he's Captain Underpants. And he's great in both. The boys, the performances by um, Kevin Hart and Thomas Middleditch, like you really, you great performances on, you know, all the way around. But the, you know, you really, they just, the movie does such a good job of establishing the boys' friendship. You know, we get a little bit of how they got to be friends. Yes. And they're always like encouraging, maybe not for the best, you know, maybe for in pranks and stuff like that, but they're always encouraging each other. They've always got each other's back. And um, even when they don't completely agree, like the other one will be like, yeah, I don't get that, but okay. (laughs) (laughs) You know, it's, it's so sweet. Why, it's the paperwork to separate you two. (gasps) It's really incredible. I can actually see the end of your friendship. And it ends right here on this dotted line. George, do something. Put the pin down, Mr. Krupp, or we'll hypnotize you. What? What? You said do something. What is that? Forged from the molten plastic of Shindog, China. In the lowest floor of the darkest basement where only toy prizes dare be made exists the most powerful item ever to be found in the box of frosted sugar doodles. The Hypno Ring. Hypnotize me with that piece of plastic junk. <laughs> Does that really work? What do you think? I got it out of a cereal box. I'm warning you, if you don't do what we say, you're going to get really sleepy. Oh, will I? I'll get sleepy. <laughs> With that thing pointing at me, it's not making me sleep. Hmm. I'm not going to get sleepy for oh. What kind of plastic hokum is this? Oh, what's happening? was that? I don't know. I honestly didn't think that would happen. Gotcha. You're safe now, little turtle. When I snap my fingers, you will obey our every command. Wait, how do you know this? I don't know. I just say the first thing that comes to my mind with great authority. You are now a chicken. He 
He's a chicken. Yeah, you just really buy. Like, they really, really care about each other. They are really ride or die, these two. He, they do get Miss Captain Underpants to be to get hypnotized, and they have him. yeah, they sabotage, and it's a little different in the book, but I like the way they did it in the movie because it just is, looks awesome in the movie. They sabotage a like a science fair kind of event. They are like historic pranksters, and they never ever ever get caught. But this time, the principal and the nerd Melvin, who's played by by Jordan Peele, and it's so such a good performance. He is so funny. They have rigged up a hidden camera, so they've got them on tape, which is what happens in the book. But it's a different it's a different scenario with the pranking. It's right. funnier in the movie, I think, arguably even funnier in the movie. So the boys, so he's got he's got like an actual VHS tape of the boys, and the boys or the or the recording, and the boys are trying to get the recording back. They sneak into the principal's office, they get caught, and so they're you know they're really he's going to separate them, and so they like. They hypnotize him with this like plastic out of a cereal box little hypno ring. <laughs> it's a 3D <laughs> hypno ring. And then all of a sudden there and then Mr. Poopy Pants is also t- taking over. What is what is Mr. Poopy Pants? What is his evilness? He is a legit scientist who has a very unfortunate name and he has been <laughs> laughed at his entire life and was basically laughed out of the Nobel prizes. He was about to win the Nobel prize. And when they announced his name, everybody laughed and that's when he snapped. So he has a, his invention that he was winning the Nobel prize for was that he has this gun that can shrink or grow things, shrink, grow gun. And he, what he really wants to do is one, eliminate laughter first from children and then from the entire world <laughs> hiya class i'm your cool new teacher not some scary guy with a secret evil agenda anyway i'm just going to dive right in here if there was one thing about this world that you could change what would it be oh oh He's on Earth. Unattainable. Anyone else? Pacific Ocean into chocolate. Atlantic into nacho cheese. It's like we're the same person and yet so, so different. I love it. (laughs) But more importantly, if I had to change one thing about the world, it would be to get rid of laughter. Get rid of laughter. What kind of person wants to do that? Oh, oh, ah, ah, sir, sir. Yes? I love it. Oh, look at this. We got a grade day suck up. Good to know. Good to know. Anyway, this is the brain of an air fridge child. Right here is the thinking about candy lopolis. The fear of what's under the bed lobe. This is the only thing I'll eat is pizza, chicken nuggets, or bottled noodles lobe. Right here is the, as soon as someone else has a toy, I want that toy anterior lobe. And this, this is the haha gaffar chocolamalus. This funny little purple pot holds our entire capacity for laughter. For years, I've tried to shrink it or cut it out entirely. But frustratingly, our survival seems dependent upon it. I don't like this. I mean, I don't really understand it, but the stuff I am understanding seems genuinely bad to me. Yeah, same. Um, excuse me, Professor uh, P? Why are you trying to get rid of laughter? Isn't laughter the best medicine? Medicine (laughs) is the best medicine. So, So yeah, so that's his that's his deal is that he is a so he sees the ad for a science teacher at an elementary school and he's like, oh, perfect. My perfect my perfect experimental, you know, it's to have like my own lab or I can experiment on these kids and take away their sense of humor before I go after the rest of the planet. The first thing he does is he meets there's like two girls in the hallway and he starts yelling at them and he puts them in a cage and then Jordan Peele becomes his sidekick because he's just this nerdy little kid. But the, yeah, with the, no sense of humor, no, sense, no of sense of humor. humor. Right. He can't handle when people he always thinks people are laughing at him. And 
I guess, you know, it is a silly name. I mean, I, I guess he never thought to change it. He says, you know, at one point he's like, pronounce it the Swiss way on the ooh, accent on the ooh. It's like, what? What are you talking about? But Captain Underpants, so Captain Underpants, uh, when he's the principal, he has all these tapes and he basically blackmails the kids and says, you're going to be separated and you're going to be working for me all the time. You're going to like clean my house. You're going to clean the schools. You're going to like morning, noon and night. I'm going to work you or you're going to get in super duper trouble because I have all these tapes that can prove that you did all these pranks. And these kids are like, oh, no. But then they get Captain Underpants to like find out where the tapes are. And Captain Underpants, they just tell Captain Underpants what to do. And they're like, you know, find out Mr. Poopy he Pants' listens. name. He yes. does whatever. Yeah. What does the P stand for? Excuse me? The P in your name. What does it stand for? Oh, it's private. So that means your name is Professor Private? <laughs> What's so funny? I don't I don't get it. Principal's office! Now! You two! Why him? Because your friendship and shared sense of humor irritates me and must be destroyed! We gotta do something about that new science teacher. Yeah, it's like he's even more of a uh, villain than Krupp. I didn't even think that was possible. Whoa, whoa, wait a second. Tell me about it. What? Who, who do you think? Oh, okay. Maybe we could fix this if we just... Can you hear me? No, that'll never work. La, 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 la. I'm sitting right here. Wait, Professor P doesn't want anybody to know his last name, right? Right. Who's Professor P? Exactly. Oh, where's the respect? I am your principal. Wait. Is he crap again? George! Yep, pretty sure he is. Where are How'd that even happen? Ah, la, la. Greetings! I need to get the sidekicks. What do I need again? The file on the new science, science teacher. teacher. Oh, right, right, right. I need the bile on the gooey fence creature. Oh, science teacher. Uh, the dewy tense preacher. Oh. Uh, 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 the dial on the lottery. Oh, come on! Ah, thank you, human woman. Sidekicks, explain to me the importance of this secret file. There's a new supervillain in town. We're trying to discover. And, he, and um, he, he flirts with the teacher, like they. Oh, the no, the lunch lady. The lunch lady. The lunch lady is so sweet. That's Kirsten Shaw's character. Um, so cute. the The whole thing, yeah. is so cute and so funny, and you know, it's. The the quote unquote danger is something that is totally implausible. It would never, ha- you know. So kids can relax and laugh, and you know, there, there's you're never. If, I can't imagine like a child actually being scared in the movie theater that Professor Poopy Pants is going to take away their sense of humor with the, their ray gun in the giant toilet. So yeah, there's Melvin's turbo toilet. That's something that the- <laughs> that's right. Creating. It's a turbo toilet. <laughs> it's just you know. It's just a scream. The whole thing yeah. is so funny. It's just so silly and so funny. And they just, right. And there's just all these different adventures. And they figure their way around it. And like you said, they learn to just like, they use his powers, but they have to like help him along because he doesn't know what he's doing. And sometimes he winds up, you know, he winds up in the bushes and he wakes up and he's like, what am I doing here? My underwear in the bushes. And they have to like give him his clothes and tell him what to do. But the kids are just, they're really, really sweet. They're very funny. And they they have this ability with this hypno ring to create this character of character, character of Captain Underpants, they make their principal really fun and like their pal and like helps them out. And there's, I, I'm not giving it just like there's so much. It's so funny. Like just adult. I was laughing out loud. I think the music is great in here. The, the music is awesome. Yeah. But again, it's like so, really great themes. And, and a lot of this stuff is not, again, not in the book that we read. Maybe it's in later books. But I think the messages are so are really great. The boys, when they first stumble into hypnotizing the principal, they're like, oh, crap. Like, we can't. What do we do? Like, this guy thinks he's a superhero. He's jumping out of the window. We can't have that. And when they sort of get it under control, and then they're phrasing like, well, if we we put him back to being the principal, the principal is just evil. And he's, he's going to separate us and he's going to do all kinds of other stuff to hurt kids. And, and the, you know, but there's no, like, real danger. Anyway... What I love is they realize, the boys realize, well, how come Captain Underpants is so nice and the principal's so mean? Well, because Captain Underpants thinks we're his friends. And the principal, he has no friends. Maybe 
if instead of, because they could have taken advantage of that situation and made the principal's life even worse, even right. more miserable. And but they're like, no, what if like we set it up so he can have friends and he can have a life besides like being the iron fist principal. So, um, and it works. Yeah. And so they, anyway, they have this, it's really a nice message, I think, for kids to not only to take that approach to a crisis, but also encouraging kids to go, oh, well, wait a minute, how come this is like this? Oh, how come? Because nobody's good or bad. You know, even Professor Poopy Pants, like, he's a legit scientist. Right. He His feelings were really hurt, <laughs> you know, like his whole life. He and then when he walks well. away. And yeah. then he gets, keeps getting hit by the car. <laughs> mm. Oh, my. This is not a comic. This is a history book. <laughs> and as such, it should be taught in every classroom. And you yourself must teach it. Because that is how good it is. I don't understand. I thought, like, we'd be on the same page here. Ah, what page is that? I'm on page nine here. It's fantastic. Look, 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 look. It's about this evil science teacher who looks a lot like you, by the way. And he wanted to rid the world of laughter. But he couldn't figure out how to do it. Even worse, it seemed like everywhere he went, people were having fun and laughing. It was just infuriating. But then he discovered someone who wasn't. I don't get it. Why is it funny? Anti-humor boy. And then the professor says, Very interesting. <laughs> that, that, that's my voice for him. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Give me that. That's no anti-humor boy. That's the suck up from class. Very interesting. <laughs> you boys don't even realize it, but your silly comic will just help figure out how to wipe out left on the improve. Hey, watch where you're going! You just hit Professor Poopy Pants! Poopy Pants? <laughs> That's not funny! That's not funny! In the heart of the sidewalk! Oh, if I had insurance, you'd be in... Oh, I'll admit that was surprising. There are so many great jokes in this. There's great visual uh, jokes, especially when they, they start playing with the shrink grow gun. and uh, Really awesome. I love the whole thing about the the... The secretary, the principal secretary being on hold yes. for like the entire, for the entire movie for a billion movie. dollars. And then, yeah. It hangs up by accident. So funny. Yeah. So cute. There's a great that, version of so Think good. by Adam Lambert that they play a bunch of times. It's good. It's really good. And then uh, Weird Al does the theme song. Still a work in progress. It's not a bird and it's not a plane. Uh-huh. And it's not an exile and sandwich. It's the wasteland warrior. Here is mighty battle cry. Oh, Lord, Lord. Hey, watch out, crap. It's wedgie power time. Captain Underpants. Yeah, 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 yeah. Faster than a speedy wasteland. He's a hound. Oh, no. You know, I always have time for Weird Al. He's always... Oh. But, like, who else would you get, by the way? I mean, that's like... Of course. This it is- would be a slap in the face to get anybody else than Weird Al. Yes. Yeah. And that's the whole... I don't know why there haven't been any others. I mean, it could be... Is it because of COVID? I don't know that everything... Possibly. Is- I don't know. Because I know Kevin Hart, I'm sure, is not cheap. I'm sure it was... No, probably not. I'm sure... But he- even then, I mean, it's not like he wasn't a star already. They These yeah. were all big name people already when they made this movie. And they certainly open it to a sequel. That would be... I mean, it would be great. Of course I would be would totally be into that. I would yeah. be totally, totally into that. This movie made a lot of money. It was a big hit. I totally see why. And now there's there's an extension of it on Netflix. It's its own series. I super loved it. I, I really enjoyed this. This was like a really fun world to go to. If I have to make a decision, if it's yeah. between like the one book and the one movie, I would pick the movie. 
But Same. I'm glad I read the book. That's the thing. Oh, the book and the book is I mean, the book is awesome. The book is so good. And it's a quick read. Like I said, like like we did in our house, like if you have re- reluctant readers at home, you know, start by it's a fun book to read out loud, I guess is what I'm saying. It's a mm-hmm. very fun book to read out loud. And the kids can find all kinds of stuff in the pictures that are lots of visual jokes in the book. And then encourage your kid to read it on their own. If there's they a can. whole series they can get. There's mm-hmm. a lot there. And then as they grow up, they can follow his work. Uh, it's it's exceptional. It's really, this was a super fun one. And it also, once again, I'm like, why on earth would you ban this? Are you a, are you allergic to joy? Is that your problem? Yeah. Like, Dang, man. Yeah. It's really, it's really. Yeah. Baffling. Baffling. Now. Now. Yes. Rubs. Rubs hands a la Mr. Burns. Um, <laughs> Another Simpsons reference. It is October. Listen, it in San Diego, it is, do you know what to this today? It is 72 degrees. I am wearing long sleeves. It is. I'm just like, I'm just faking it t- till I make it that it's autumn. It is a 60 I had a degrees hot drink. and raining. <laughs> you See, that's prop- that here is like, brr. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So we're looking but, at um, some yeah, stories I'm so here. Yes. With Margo, we have to remember she's not into like the gross horror slash. I'm not a slashy, no slash and gore, please. Right. So here are some ideas. And then, like I said, I, you know, we have to also keep the page count in mind and stuff like that. So let me just throw some with you. Somebody said, uh, well, maybe at the end of the book, Goosebumps, those books are banned, uh, but they're also there's Don't Look Now, which then it was the Nicholas Rogue movie. Oh, That's yeah. That's a short story. Um, That's right. The I Fly. like that movie a I lot. I do, too. Uh, the Fly <laughs> is based on a short story. Is it really? I never knew that. Yeah. Say, there's The Woman in Black, which is a ghost story. And by Susan Hill, it's 178 pages. And Harry Potter is the lead. <laughs> there's The Thing, but I think The Thing might be too intense for you yeah yeah just just so for those of you who are newer you know some of the books that you may be like screaming out right now we've probably already done yes because we've we've done spooky october books for a long time so we've done frankenstein we've done dracula we, we've done um silence of the oh lambs God, psycho, psycho silence of the lambs yeah so most of the biggies we've probably already done that's why you're like why are they talking about these things when there's all those other amazing books right rosemary's baby we could like that. Oh yeah, that would be a good one. Okay. Um, there's Evil Eye. It's a movie that's streaming on Amazon. I and it's a sh- it's a it's a short story that's on Audible, and then it's a movie on Amazon that's supposed to be really huh. good. I don't know. It's like an hour long to listen to. It's not that long. Candyman, but that might be too. I don't know. You think about that. Um, that would okay. Here's how. Here, here's I had like an instant reaction. Why? Because the trailer scared me so yes. much. <laughs> That's oh, always oh, a bad sign for I, me. I know what you did last summer. That's based on a Lois Duncan book from the seventies. Oh yeah. We've done Stepford Wives for those of you who are wondering about Stepford we Wives. We did do Stepford Wives. We've done Silence of the Lambs. There's Let the Right One In, but I think if that freaks me out, you're gonna be no, please. Yeah. The Wicker Man, that's like 300 pages. Misery is 300 pages. I was thinking, I put down the Amityville Horror just because it's so so dumb. Benicula. What's that? Did you ever read Benicula? No, what's that? It's a, it's a kid's book. It's a, it was, it's a, it's what we, you know, it's like a, it's like a, a book for reluctant readers from when we were kids. And it's about a, a bunny rabbit who's a vampire. <gasps> But it's like somebody's pet rabbit. Was it a movie? And yes, it was made into an animated special, but I don't know how available it is. So yeah. I'll I'll do a little looking into to that. Okay. But that was the one that I was that I was trying to remember earlier. It was Benicula. So there's Don't Look Now, there's The Fly. So sorry to interrupt. Yeah. If we do the fly, do we do the do we do the original one? Like, Help me <laughs> on the <laughs> Or the Jeff Goldblum, like or the really Jeff disgusting. Goldblum one. Yeah. It's so gross. <laughs> I'm fine with either one. Okay. Um, I th- I like what was the one that you said right after the fly? Don't look now. Yes. Can we do Don't look now? Yeah, it's Daphne du Maurier. Let's do that one next. It's a uh, so it's easy, pretty How easy many pages? to stream. It's a short story, so I'm going to say like let's say 150 ish. 
That's not too bad. Oh, okay. That's not bad. No, it's Nicholas Rogue. I think it's controversial for a sex scene. So just to got to give you. He's having sex with his wife, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll talk about it. Yeah. And uh, I haven't seen it in a while. Yeah, but it's a good one. And it's a it's it's got a very scary story to it. I love yeah. Daphne du Maurier. So me too. Don't look now. We've done we've done Rebecca. And what was the other Daphne the du Maurier we did? The birds. That's right. See, so we did, we've done a lot of these folks. We've, we've done a lot. You folks. So, OK, so it's the next one will be. Don't look now. Daphne du Maurier. The movie is Nicholas Rogue. It's streaming just about everywhere. Thank you all for listening. Let me take a moment and tell people that my book is coming out in a couple of weeks. If you would like to get it, it's called Filmed in Brooklyn. And I, it's over 250 locations in Brooklyn that were backdrops for movies. It's coming out on History Press. You could pre-order it now. Margot Donahue filmed in Brooklyn. For those of you who have ordered already, ordered it already, excuse me, thank you so much. And if you would like a signed copy, I have little stickers that I could sign for you and send them out to you that you could put into the book. So that was, I just wanted to take a moment and say, and thank you, Margot, for letting me do that. Absolutely. All right. And where can they find you? You can find me online at coloniabook.com and all of my social media callouts are at She's Nacho Mama. And where can they find you? You can find me at Brooklyn Fitchick for Twitter and Instagram. My site is brooklynfitchick.com and I am on TikTok at Margot Donahue. Be back now in October for our spooky episodes. Thank you so much for listening to the Book Versus Movie Podcast. We are a part of the Frolic Podcast Network. You can find more podcasts you will love at frolic.media forward slash podcasts. We follow the hashtags Lady Pod Squad and Potter and Family. If you want to support the show, you can go to our Patreon page, go to P-A-T-R-E-O-N and look for Book Versus Movie Podcast. We have a basic Facebook page, but we also have a private Facebook group. Go to Facebook and type in Book VS Movie Podcast Group if you want to join that. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Book vs. Movie. Spell all those words out. If you'd like to send us an email, it's Book vs. Movie Podcast. Spell that all out at gmail.com. You can follow Margot D at Brooklyn Fit Chick on social media and Margot P at She's Nacho Mama. Thanks so much again for checking out our show and we'll be back soon with a new episode.